I hope you guys are doing well today. Um, I've been thinking a lot about where the Lord is taking us, not only in this pandemic, but after this pandemic. And it's so funny because I really felt the Lord say to me um, one day, he said, he said, release yourself from the need to preach. So I was like, Lord, what do you mean? What do you mean release yourself from the need to preach? And he said, there are things that I want to do in churches that go um, beyond preaching that are that are new and he said my word will still go forward the way the the way I want it to go forward but the avenues will be different and he says um, ministers of the gospel um, will will have different unique creative ways of preaching and he said for for the the older generations that are used to um, maybe um, a one hour worship service and um, a half an hour to an hour sermon he said uh, we, we have to adjust the word of God never changes let's get that right his word is the same yesterday today and forever his word stands forever it stands forever so much that he dedicated 175 verses in Psalms 119 talking about his word and how important it was. Uh, that's the scripture that says, His word is a lamp onto my feet and a light onto my pathway. Um, he said, the, en and the entrance of your word gives, li gives light. He says, every th he says all these wonderful things about his word and his word um the validity the validity the validity of it the power of it will never ever change um the me the mirror of the scriptures will never change but the way it's brought about he's going to ask um his ministers and other pastors and other people to to deliver it in several different ways not just the stand there and uh, scripture and notes for 20 minutes he's going to break open the box so if you're a preacher listening to this um be prepared for God to open your box. Be prepared for God to not only open your box, but wreck your box and change your expectations. Um, because um, the way we've been doing church now, it has worked, but it's it's time to change the game. I really... I really sense that through this pandemic, he's going to change the way we do sermons, the way his word is going to come about, the way we do worship, the way we do, the way we do church. And you know what's funny? Most of the way we have done church it's been passed down for generations and we don't know where it's come from. It's come from uh, traditions that have worked in the past. 
Um, but it's not that they don't work anymore. It's just that he wants to broaden them. Um, I envision, I envision church being more interactive. Um, he said, he said to me, he said to me, break down the fourth wall. See, I love film and television. And in television, the fourth wall, um, when you look at a, let me explain it this way. When you look at a comedy stage, like, you know, if you're looking at, like, a comedy set, like, on the shows of Friends or Will and Grace or any of those old school comedy shows, they have, like, three walls. Um, the sets usually have three walls. And the fourth wall is the audience. So there is a three wall set with all the sets and all the accoutrements of the set. And then there's this blank fourth wall that is the cameras and the audience. So what he's saying uh, to teachers and preachers now is he, he wants to break that fourth wall. You know, he wants to do, he wants to do things that we've never seen, but in order for God to do things uh, he's, we've never seen, uh, he wants us available to do things that we've never done as preachers and teachers. And I just sense that he's going to flip this whole thing upside down. Coronavirus was not. Um, I, I wholeheartedly believe this. It was not sent by God, but it's going to be used by God. Um, I believe that out of the woodwork you'll see creative ideas and you'll see different creativities uh, for the church. Uh, um, to come from this, this um, time. And I'm not just talking about more online stuff or different way, uh, different slight ways of doing this. He's going to change for anybody whose ear is inclined. He's going to change the whole gamut of the way church is done. Uh, for example, I was reading. I just finished reading today um, this amazing book by uh, Glennon Doyle Mellon, Mellon called Love Warrior. She, she wrote it about six years ago. I had, I had heard of it, but I've ne I never really read it. And the Lord, and I was on Audible. And the Lord said, read it. He said, I want you to read this book. And so I read it. And so, some of um, what she said is very spiritualist and very uh, non-Christian. But majority of what she said was powerful. And one of the powerful things, one of the um, powerful examples that she gave um when she had gotten pregnant the first time with her first daughter, she was single and alone and didn't have anywhere to go. So her parents, because she was an alcoholic at that time, so her parents at this time uh, had gotten fed up with her. And they made an appointment for her to see the priest. 
and because they didn't know what to do. Uh, she was pregnant, getting in trouble, drinking, bulimic. She didn't, they didn't know what to do. So uh, she went to the church, and while she was waiting for the priest, um, for her appointment with the priest, she went into the church and began to kneel on the carpet with the floor and stared at a statue of Mary and she said she felt so loved. She could feel the love of God just pouring down on her. And so she was having this spiritual experience. And then the priest came and got her. And then the meeting didn't go so well. It was very dictatorial. And uh, you have to confess to me, like in the Catholic tradition. Um, and after this horrible meeting with this priest, uh, she said, she said, I want, she, she went back into the sanctuary and began to kneel again with Mary where she felt the love of the Lord. And um, she said, um, the priest came in and kicked her out. I've got to lock up now. And the priest said to her, and she said, I wish I could have just stayed there uh, looking at this, this uh, Mary statue. Now, I know I'm not Catholic, and in the Catholic tradition, it's different. Uh, they believe that um, they pray th through Mary, but we believe in the evangelical Protestant tradition that we don't need to pray through anyone. We go, we just go straight to God because of his blood. But what got me about that story was the priest let his tradition and his and the way he did things get in the way of who was really needing him and who was really hurting and a young girl who really needed to know the love of God. And I began to think of, she said, why would he kick me out if he knew I was hurting? And I began to think of um, a church being opened 24 hours just for anyone to come and pray or for counseling or for, you know, I just began to get all these crazy ideas because I began to think of the church should be there for people. I know there are logistical things like expenses and other stuff, but I think, uh, I think first and foremost we need to be there to worship God but as an outflow of worshiping God we need to be there for people. I personally a few years ago got the idea that really the church shouldn't close. The church should be there 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for whoever needs it. And, and I got all these crazy ideas of how it, how it could work. And I think that's one of the things that God is going to change. Um, we've been in our boxes. We've been in our little churches for too long. And the world is dying and the world needs us. Not only for, as preachers, on the pulpit or on YouTube or whatever, but he needs us to be the hands and feet of him. And I can see him according to the size of churches and the manpower, him changing the way he does ministry.
I can see instead of a, a traditional sermon, I can see um, pastors having uh, town halls where they actually get to get to the heart of what people are going through and what people are feeling and um, where they get to actually sit with the people. Because that's what Jesus did with his disciple. disciples. When, when he taught, he didn't stand on a podium uh, opening the Torah the Torah and preaching, he sat among them, he preached them, he talked to them, he told stories to make it clear to them. So I really think that God is going to desperately change the game as to how we're going to move and breathe and have our being as the church. Um, and even in our own personal life, I believe in each personal life, uh, God is changing how we do things in our businesses, in our lives, because um, the time for old, for old mindsets and old ways of doing church and, and the old ways of communicating, the time for that is over. And God really wants to break the box of what we think is church and what we what we think is Him and not Him, while while still being true to His word. The vehicles will will change and be different, but His word will stay the same. And each individual preacher. Um, he will enable you to use your gifting and your personality to speak to who you're meant to speak to. Because the reason he designed you like that, pastor so-and-so, um, bishop so-and-so, minister so-and-so, is because there's a sector of people that only you can speak to, that only you can minister to, because you have the right temperament, you have the right personality style, you have the right swag, for lack of a better word, to reach them. And there are so many people in the world who need Christ. And those people may need him the way you present him. The word of God is the same, but each pastor's delivery, each minister's gift is different. Take, for example, me. I like music. I love music of every kind. So if you look at some of my earlier videos, a lot of my earlier videos, I use secular songs to bring about spiritual truths. See, that's my gift. I can listen to a secular song and pick out the spiritual truth in that. So God uses that to minister uh, to people when they don't even know they're being ministered to. So that's what I mean. So don't shy away from anything that God has given you. If you, if you think you're too loud and demonstrative, there are people that need that. If you think you're too quiet and what, too quiet and subdued, there are people that need to hear the word like that. If you're, if you're a biblical scholar and you love to delve into the scriptures, um, there are people that, that need the word like that. If you're a more abstract preacher like myself um, that uses the word but in a very storytelling and 
musical, practical, abstract way, there are people that need the word of God like that. So don't, don't think whatever talent he's given you to preach the word of God, don't think it's, it's in, insignificant because it's not. And for those of you who are not preachers, who are about 80% um, of you, he's going to use your talents and your gifts to spread his gospel. There are people in your workplace, there are people around you right now that need his gospel the way that you will preach it. There are people in your cubicle, your children, your adult children need his gospel. Your four-year-old needs his gospel the way you can teach it. There's a reason why you're the mom of that child. There's a reason why you're the, the director at that firm or that company. There's a reason why you're the, a consumer or a client of, of that um, of that, of that SSLU, there's a, there's a, there's a reason why you're there, and there's a reason why you have the gifts and talents that you do have, because people, there are a sector of people that he wants you to reach with your particular gifts and talents. I used to always fret about um, not using the verse in a couple of points um, until he said to me, I made you that way. I made you demonstrative. I made you, um, I made you to the point that you use secular music. And he said, Rachel, my word is hidden in everything you say. You might not get the scripture or the verse, but my word is still there. And if you need to, I know you do, but I've given you different gifts and people are still getting my word. They're just getting it in your, in the way I gave it to you. And that made me feel a lot better. That made me free to be me. And I pray for everybody right now that the Lord will free you to be yourself. That the Lord will assure you that he's made you you for a reason. He's made you that kind of mom for a reason. He's made you that kind of dad for a reason. He's made you that kind of business person for a reason, for his glory. He's made you that kind of preacher for a reason. He's made you that kind of person for a reason, for a reason. And he's going to use, even though the things you think are insignificant, he's going to use them for his glory. Lord God, I pray that y'all, y'all illuminate us with your understanding of our gifts and talents, talents, Lord. Shifts, shift our perspective, God. Teach us how you want us to walk. Br bring us to a place of new life and new understanding of our gifts, Lord God. Change the way we do things. We receive your changes. We receive your spirit, Lord God. Cause us to walk in new revelation in your spirit day by day. Cause us to move through life with you talking in our, in our ear, Lord God. Hone our skills, oh God. Hone our skills of listening to your spirit. Holy Spirit, come down and then in, and in do us with power, God. Give the church new life, Lord God. Breathe life into old things, oh God. Bring new wine and 
bring new wine in to take the old bring new take the old wine or old wine skins and bring new wine oh god saturate us with your spirit god saturate us with your love oh god teach us oh god how special you are to 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 you lord god teach us that lord god that you teach us how to hone and use our giftings for your glory in the most effective way change our agenda lord flip it upside down lord god we want you and we want you more abundantly lord jesus than we've ever had you before keep on us your understanding your wisdom before you keep on us blessings and miracles oh god we ask like solomon god we ask for wisdom we ask for knowledge we ask for understanding oh god give us the spirit of issachar the ability to understand the times and the seasons and how you want us to operate as a church oh god bring us into the newness of life shape us more mold us potter shape us mold us teach us oh god make us teachable give, give us teachable hearts in the name of jesus amen so guys i'll talk to you i'll talk to you later bye and i'd like to say a special happy birthday to richard brown happy birthday pastor brown many returns of the day God bless you. See you later, guys. Bye. See you later, guys. Bye.